These are nine ridiculously simple hacks that plant experts use that you'll wonder why you've never thought of them yourself. These are hacks that will save you a ton of time and money in the process and make you a better plant parent. So let's get straight to it. The first hack is a relatively new discovery for me and I absolutely love it because it makes repotting my plants so much easier and quicker. I'm willing to bet that your current method of repotting your plant is to take the plant out of its existing pot, break up the roots, fill a new pot with a base layer of soil, add your plant and then awkwardly fill the pot with the soil around the plant. Well I've got a new way that is much simpler, quicker and creates much less mess. Grab your plant still in its nursery pot and another pot there's a couple of sizes bigger. Fill a base layer of soil into the new pot and then instead of taking your plant out of its existing pot, add it as it is to the new pot with soil. Backfill around like you normally would, making sure to compact the soil around the pot slightly. If your soil is dry, then give it a light water to make sure the soil is sticky and not loose. Now this is where the magic happens. Take the plant out along with the pot it's in, and you should be left with the perfect impression of your plant's root ball that is the perfect size. Take the plant out of its pot and then add it to the new pot and you're done. How simple was that? If you're worried that you need to break up the roots of the plant, then this isn't usually necessary. It will find a way to spread out into the new soil by itself. One of the big things that new plant parents or even experienced plant parents struggle with is identifying whether or not they're overwatering their plant. If you're giving the roots of the plant too much water too often, they will start to rot and eventually the plant will die. Identifying rotting roots before it's too late can really make the difference between saving a plant or watching it perish. Healthy roots should be bright beige and plump, whereas rotting roots will be turning black and going mushy. But how can we identify this easily without having to go through the rigmarole of taking the plant out of its pot and inspecting the roots, creating a mess in the process. Well, the solution is extremely simple. Pot your plants up into clear plastic orchid pots so that you can see the root ball of your plant anytime you want. You can now simply see the roots growing and easily give them a checkup when you water the plant and spot any rotting issues early. And the great thing about these pots is they usually have slits in the sides, which is perfect for keeping oxygen around the root ball of the plant which does make for healthy roots. Like I've said, getting the watering right for houseplants gets beginner plant parents into a muddle with a tendency to either over or underwater the plant. A nifty product that takes away the problem of getting the watering right is self-watering plant pots. These are systems that have an inner and outer shell with a piece of rope going between the two. The idea is that you put your plant in the inner pot sat on top of the rope and the other end of the rope sits in a reservoir of water in the outer pot. The rope can then wick up the water to the plant's soil slowly. And this is a much gentler, automated way to water your plant. The hack then is to make these yourself rather than purchasing expensive self-watering systems. Take a plastic nursery pot and some rope or string. Weave the string through the holes at the bottom of the pot so that both ends are dangling out of the bottom. Put your plant into the pot, pulling up the string so that it's more in the center of the soil. You then need to find a decorative pot that will suspend the nursery pot on top so that the string is submerged in the water, but the pot isn't. I've set this up with a pot with a raised center so that the rope sits in the reservoir around the sides and the pot sits on the raised platform. Top up the outer pot with water whenever it's dry making sure to not go above where the plant sits and you're good to go. This is great for keeping your plants consistently watered, especially when you're going away from home. This next hack is another one that makes life so much easier when repotting plants. And it's one I just love for its simplicity and effectiveness. I don't know about you, but the thing I really hate about repotting my plants is the leaves getting in the way. They either get really mucky or worse, end up breaking when we're trying to handle the plants while getting soil in the nooks and crannies of the pot. You often end up with a plant that looks like it's been in the ringer, which makes you wonder why you bothered in the first place. A really simple solution then is to take your plant and grab a large sheet of paper and some tape. Wrap the paper around the foliage of the plant like you're wrapping a Christmas present and tape it in place. You can now carefully pull your plant out of its pot and repot it. You might want to loosen the root ball from the pot before this stage so that you can easily pull it out of its pot. The beauty of this hack is that the foliage of the plant is kept out of the way. And it's much easier to repot the plant in its new home. Once you're done perfecting the soil, simply remove the paper and voila, you're done. Keep the sheet of paper for the next plant you're repotting.
I've run out of space in my home to display my many plants, much to my wife's displeasure, and I'm always trying to find nifty new ways to show them off. I've even tried placing them in front of the telly, but this didn't go down particularly well, as you can imagine. My recent addition was this plant shelf that I had fitted over my windowsill in both my living room and dining room. Unfortunately, this has already been filled with plants and I've run out of room again. I'm now starting to explore ways of hanging plants from the ceiling or the walls. And a great hack I've used twice in my home is to repurpose shelf brackets as hangers for planters. Provided you have something that you can hang a plant with, these shelf brackets are perfect and allow me to freely hang a plant half a metre from the wall. Once you've affixed one to the wall, you just need to find a hook with a screw attached that you can screw into the bracket and hang the plant from. I use a macrame hanger that I purchased from Ikea, but you can probably easily make this yourself. I think these units look great and are very versatile so that you can brighten up any space in your home. I've got another hack to make your repotting life easier now, and it simply involves using a kitchen fork. Taking a root-bound plant out of its snug pot can sometimes be a real challenge, and often involves making a mess as we hold the plant upside down and push the plant out of the pot. If the plant is really stuck, I've also been known to yank on the stems of the plant, which is never a good thing. If your plant is on the smaller side, then grab yourself a kitchen fork and insert it down the side of the root ball and prise the plant out. This method really allows you to get hold of the root ball of the plant much easier without having to yank away at the foliage and then you can plonk it into its new home. This is a particularly useful hack if you have a tray of seedlings that need to be up potted. You can quickly go through and grab each of them with a fork and this is much easier than picking up the tray every time and pushing them out. So do give it a try and let me know how you get on. With global warming seemingly becoming more and more of an issue for pretty much all of us, we seem to be experiencing hotter summers and warmer and wetter winters. Here in Sheffield, some days we're seeing summertime temperatures exceed 40 degrees Celsius or 105 degrees Fahrenheit, which is absolutely crazy considering summer temperatures don't normally exceed 20 degrees Celsius. But what does this have to do with plants? Well, hot summertime temperatures mean that our house plants dry out much quicker than if the weather is more temperate, meaning we have to water much more frequently. During our last summer, I was watering my plants twice a week when I normally water only once a week. This evaporation tends to occur at the top of the soil as the hot air draws out the moisture in the soil. So the hack then is using a layer of mulch on top of the soil of our house plants to stop plants drying out so quickly. You'd have no doubt seen this in gardens where savvy gardeners put down a layer of mulch two inches deep to stop water evaporation. This is particularly important in areas with water conservation policies in place. So we can apply this same theory to our house plants. It's something I don't see enough people doing. You can use lots of things for mulch for indoor plants, from wood chippings to clay pebbles to potting grit. I've used wood chippings on plants that are particularly thirsty that would dry out constantly in hot weather. It just needs to be relatively thick layer probably at least two inches to be effective at retaining moisture in the soil. The great thing about this hack not only is it great for your plant soil, but it also looks fantastic too. Let me know in the comments if you're an indoor plant mulcher. For more awesome plant hacks like creating a self-watering system for your plants while you're away, make sure you click on the video here.